Hi, my name is Haydalyn Laco, and I'm going to give you seven tips on how to move during a pandemic. With that, let's get started. Tip number seven, take advantage of the real estate market right now. Due to COVID, not a lot of people are moving. And with that, that means prices are going to be plummeting. Even after this pandemic is over, more companies are going to allow more of their employees, at least some form of teleworking. That way, not as many people really have to live in the city that they work in. Because of this, I was actually able to move into an apartment that originally was completely out of my price point. But now I get to live in a place that is convenient for my work, within a good price point, and something that I feel safe in. So that's a big plus, especially during this pandemic. Tip number six, see what you can shop online for. Even before the pandemic, we were all pretty much doing this. So just continue doing what you've been doing. When you're moving in the middle of a pandemic, it's really hard to have to ship everything out that you want or you need. So with that, it's better to shop online because of the fact that it decreases the level of exposure for you to interact with others. And also it makes sure that you can continue shopping for the things that you need. It honestly really helps if whatever type of place that you're going to be moving to, if they're able to hold on to some of your stuff before you arrive, it helps with the transition a lot easier just because it's going to be hard when you fly in and you have to worry about all these things you can at least have some reassurance that some of the stuff that you need is just right there tip number five research in advance what stores you would need to hit in person unfortunately not everyone is able to shop online for all the things that they need i know for me there are some products where i just like being able to look at it and decide from there if it's something that I want. So with that, it's always good to have a game plan when you're shopping in stores. I always like to get in, get out. That's just kind of more of my mantra. I hate window shopping. Therefore, researching what you need and where you need it is really helpful. It helps you to get to know the area a little bit more. And also it decreases the level of exposure that you would get just because you already have an idea of what you want to get and where you want to go. Tip number four, research what companies can deliver. I know for me, I had to buy a lot of furniture just because of where I'm living. I kind of started completely fresh. My family and I drove down to the local Ikea and just bought a ton of furniture there. I love Ikea. Ikea is like the Build-A-Bear for adults um, and all within a good price point. The closest Ikea was about a 30 minute drive, which is great if you have a car. 30 minutes is not that bad. However, for me, I don't have a car living here. Uh, I learned if I knew what I wanted in advance and I did an early order and paid a $75 delivery fee, they would be able to deliver my furniture within a few business days, which is great. This really helped because when they actually arrived to my place, they were actually able to help load the furniture into my apartment. All of course, you know, with maintaining social distancing and wearing your masks. Please continue doing that no matter what. So knowing what places can deliver for you is going to be extremely helpful in terms of your labor and your financial costs. Tip number three, bring extra disinfecting products and masks. If you're going to be traveling to a new place, you want to make sure that safety is your biggest priority. The last thing that you want to worry about when moving into a new place is figuring out if it's clean enough for you, especially during this pandemic. If you're going to be flying, you're going to be in exposure with so many people and, that you don't even know. You have no idea where they're coming from. You have no idea where they're going to, and you have no idea who or what they've been exposed to. So it's always better to be prepared and be safe. Always pack extra hand sanitizers or even just, you know, hand wipes and masks. These are things that are essential for moving to a new place just because safety should be your biggest priority no matter what. Plus, it's a huge hassle to have to worry about what is the closest place that you can go to to get some extra cleaning supplies or extra, you know, sanitizer. When you're moving, you need to focus on being able to, to move as smooth as possible. Now for tip number two, rent a car if you're not planning on bringing a car already. Where I'm living currently, you don't really need a car to get by. However, I'm coming in with a ton of stuff. If you're flying in, you must know that a lot of the airports, they have um, rental cars just right nearby or 
even within the airports. Renting a car makes the commute to wherever you need to get to faster. Plus, whenever you are going to and from stores, it really helps to be able to have a place to decompress and be able to, you know, not have to worry about other people. For the last tip, and this is the most important one, tip number one, know your state's COVID rules. Every state is a little bit different in terms of their COVID testing rules and their COVID quarantine rules. This is especially important if you're going to test out of quarantine. Here in the state that I moved to, if you take a COVID test, the COVID test must be taken 72 hours from when your flight lands. I know for some states, the COVID test isn't valid until 72 hours from when your flight departs. So you should really triple check to make sure whether or not the state depends on whether it departs or it lands because those are two really big differences. If you have your negative COVID test results on hand with a printout, it just makes it a lot easier. Also, it's super important that you research what type of COVID tests and what companies are applicable to test out of quarantine if that's an option for you. I know for several states, it kind of varies. So research that in advance. You just don't want to have to worry about whether or not you have to do the full quarantine or if your test is just not valid, how it doesn't fall within their, you know, their standards. Before you fly out, like at least check at least a week in advance how the COVID cases are doing in wherever you're going to and if there have been any changes in the phases because that could determine what tests you're able to take, um, what companies you're able to go with, what times you should take the test. You don't want to be unaware of those changes, especially when you're in the middle of a big move. You want to know what tests are good and which ones are not. There's a link below to a previous video that I made reviewing some of the COVID tests that my family members and I have taken throughout the past few months. Overall, I hope that these tips have been extremely helpful for you. I wish more people had let me know this when I was moving. If you have any questions whatsoever or any comments, uh, please comment below and to make sure to like and subscribe.